But back in the early 50s, the Boone and Crockett Club developed a universal antler measuring system to determine a buck's ranking in the record books. Here's BNC scorer Tom Bloomingdale to explain. If an animal is taken with a bow and arrow, okay, it can be entered into Pope and Young. Now, if it's large enough and it gets that score of 170, you can enter it in Pope and Young and you can also enter it into Boone and Crockett. They have two divisions, typical and non-typical. This one here is a great example of a typical whitetail. And what we're looking for is something that has a bilateral symmetry. And in doing so, this particular one, on the left side we have four points, on the right side we have five. Well, if it's bilaterally symmetrical, it means that mathematically both sides have to be equal. This point right here, okay, does not appear on this side. As a result, that's going to be a penalty. If you'll notice here on the G1s, these two are referred to as the G1s, they are both different heights. Because of that, they are not bilaterally symmetrical. There's going to be a penalty. There will be a subtraction there. If it were a non-typical, for instance, a big brow point uh, hanging down, or maybe one of the fork, uh, tines up here forked, why, those are abnormal points. And we do not subtract that from the animal. Instead, we give that credit to the animal. So that's why you wind up with two different number systems. And a typical score is 170 minimum standard, and a non-typical is 195. With Pope and Young, their standards for typical is 125, and their non-typicals is 150. In order for the animal to get to 170 points, it really means measurable inches. For instance, uh, somebody will shoot a buck that, like this one, that's five on one side, four on the other. That's a nine-point buck. But here when we're talking about points, in other words, we want to try to get to that standard. And when we say 170, we mean actually 170 inches that are, that are measured on a, on a flexible tape like this. The first thing we do is we try to get the inside spread uh, on the animal and maybe best to be shown very quickly by going between the two beams. That's one of the numbers we use and that's called the, um, the inside spread. Next, uh, we want to try to get the, the beam length. The pink line that I put on here is the line that we would follow to get the beam length. If one side's 24 and the other's 22, we subtract the two inch difference from the total score. So now we have the inside, we have the beam lengths, and then the last thing we want to do here is we want to add the G1, the G2, G3, and G4. And uh, to get them, for instance, uh, it's, it's real important that we put our cable down or wire down and determine where does this point start. And then from that point, we measure up to the top. And then last but not least, but we try to get four circumferences, like H1, 2, 3, and 4 on both sides, and then we add up all those numbers, and with that you try to get your base score of 170 or 125. Let's say that you shoot a deer with a bow and arrow, and it has a, a rack that's about that size. That's, that's a good indicator that that animal is very close to the, to the record book, score of 125. If you take an animal with a gun, and uh, you're wondering is it going to be close, an animal like this is a good, a good reference for you, because it's very close to the minimum. If you think that you've got an animal that is close to it, uh, contact uh, Boone and Crockett score or Pope and Young score. And what you're going to do is, uh, once you have the animal, you have to let it dry 60 days. That, that's rule number one. It must dry 60 days, any of the species. And that should be in normal atmospheric uh, conditions. Secondly, you bring the animal into the score. At that time, you'll, you'll have other things that you need to bring along. The check for $25, any pictures and photos that you have, bring those along. In other words, this is going to add to the authenticity. Make sure that you bring those hunting forms along with you. He'll want to have your hunting license, so bring your hunting license with you. In addition to that, the scorer will score the animal, so you'll have that score sheet, and then he's going to have an affidavit that you have to sign swearing that you took this animal in fair chase. And uh, there is a, a set of guidelines that have to be followed. Every three years, they have like a scoring, um, a scoring period. And in that three-year time, let's say 1990 to 1993, the finest of the big game species uh, for that period of time are called in to a panel. And uh, they generally call like the top three animals in. And a panel of scores would then go over the scoring of that animal. And that panel could be anywhere from three to six 
scores from all over North America. And uh, then if uh, that animal gets into the top 10 um, in the record book, uh, they all have to be panel scored also. It cannot just be scored by one person. And uh, they're very, very, they're, it's very, very difficult to get in.